Oh, good morning. Hey, it's uh, been a little while since I've been back in the studio, so I'm kind of happy to be back in here this morning. It looks like our camera is a little bit off. Uh, let me just have a quick little peek here. There we go. All right. Kind of in the frame where I need to be. Hope you guys can hear me okay. It looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like I've got some pretty good volume. Hey, mornings with James. Um, I'm going to say this right off the bat. Uh, the uh, the views that I have don't necessarily uh, reflect the views of uh, Jess FM, Jess FM .ca, or many of the other people that uh, kind of are on the air here. Hang on a second. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit more. There we go. Oh, gotta love virtual studios. Aren't they just so much fun? Um, I really should come in a little bit earlier just so I can get everything all set. Uh, the reason why I do this, though, is, for one, it's just a lot of fun. One of the things I love doing is I love speaking, I love sharing. Um, and as a clinical hypnotherapist and stage hypnotist, motivational speaker, you know, I sometimes feel it's, uh, it's important to share the gifts that we have so that others can move forward along our, our journey as well. And oftentimes, I think what we find is um, is we don't get enough of an opportunity to share and to make a difference. I'm going to share some stories from the weekend with you guys, and uh, you know what? They're they're fun stories. They're they're kind of anecdotal, and and the message this morning is sometimes when we are out trying to make a difference, um, we get sort of we get hung up on the. Um, we get hung up on the details. You ever find that? So this weekend, I uh, Friday, I had uh, the pleasure of um, of doing. Um, sorry, just checking notes from Jesse. Um, Jesse, hopefully, will be uh, sharing this all over the place, and I'll uh, be uh, sharing this as well. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, going to a speaking engagement. I'm not going to mention any names, um, but it was a it was a low turnout. Um, but still, as an entertainer, I, I felt it important to continue on and do the best I could uh, for the people that were attending there. And I started talking about something that I'm very passionate about, and it's the journey that I'm on, and it's all about self-esteem development and goal setting. And I can honestly say that um, since I would say probably late July and then into August, that was the beginning of my journey, and that was myself moving forward and things really starting to come together for me. And, uh, you know, it's not a perfect process. When we talk about self-esteem development, you know, here's, here's the thing. How do you feel about yourself? Do you wake up in the morning and you say, oh, life is fantastic. This is great. Boy, I'm going to take on the world today. Or do you wake up in the morning and are you just like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Oddly enough, the world is ours. The world is, is ours to create, the world is ours to, to make, and I think sometimes we forget that. If you're suffering from anxiety, if you're suffering from low self-esteem, low confidence, um, you just don't have a good image of yourself, then this is the area that you need to work on, self-esteem. You need that an internal language, and I'll get to that in a minute. Now, here's talking about um, getting hung up on the details. We've all had great goals that we've set. Uh, I hope you have anyway. Um, goals that we've set in life and then things that we've worked towards and, and maybe sometimes we've achieved them, sometimes we haven't. You know, I think I mentioned last year I wanted to do uh, uh, 40 shows before Christmas time, which was a reasonable amount for me for the last quarter of the year. Uh, I ended up with, uh, I believe, 31. So I fell just a little bit short. And what actually happened was I actually got sick in September, Now, uh, in December. Now, I was really busy. Uh, but because I got sick and I had this cough that I was struggling with, and I, I know a lot of people around me had those as, as well, I wasn't able to add in the extra events, the extra school events that I wanted to. And, of course, there are many implications to that. But that said, uh, it was still great to get out and speak. And I, I continue doing that. My year is off to a great start. But I've got a lofty goal. I want to do 80 presentations this year. And, and I think 80 is a bit, little bit of a low number, and it's something I haven't done in years and maybe that number should be 100. I was talking to this group about things that they've done, things that they've achieved in the past, and um, one person there said to me, you know, I, I lost X amount of weight, 
um, you know, many years ago and I managed to keep it off. That's my, that's my, my major goal. And I said, well, I don't know if that's really a great goal because we lose weight all the time. We lose weight, we put it back on, we lose it, we put it back on. Now, she was really offended when I said that. Now, here's the thing. That was something that happened many years ago. And, and of course, the repercussions of that comment, and maybe I was a little bit insensitive. Um, the point was this. She got hung up on those details, and it really held us back from moving forward. Think of this. We set goals all the time. Maybe you have a New Year's resolution you're working towards. I know for myself, I'm getting out to the gym more. I'm doing more marketing with my company. I'm working with some really great people. Um, got a great mastermind group. I've got a, a success coach that I work with, and, and she is just absolutely fantastic. I'll be sharing a little bit more about her uh, as the shows go on. And I, like I said, my, my plan is to get back in and do this more often. Now, getting back to the goals. Here is the challenge. She got hung up on that, and I said, I said, listen, we set these goals all the time, you know, whether it's to lose five pounds, 10 pounds, or just to be in better shape. And weight release, weight loss, uh, is really, it's a poor judge because, of course, you know, if you're a guy and you want to lose weight, but you get to the gym and you're doing some intense weight training, you're going to end up building muscle. You might not necessarily lose the weight, you'll lose inches, okay? Now, and that's, and that's the key. Now. I think anyone that works towards a goal of any kind, that you're actively pursuing, you've set this, this lofty ideal, this great goal, and you're working towards it, that to me is the definition of success. Okay? Now, let's get back to this whole goal thing. We have different levels of goal. There's A-type goals. These are the goals we set all the time we achieve. Okay? There's B-type goals, and these are the goals that are, uh, are more challenging. Okay, but there are also goals that if, if this happens, this happens, and this happens, then we know that we'll achieve that goal. And then there's a thing called a C-type goal. And, and if you're curious about, you know, A, B, and C-type goals, okay, this comes from um, my work with the Proctor Gallagher Group and Marika Fujimaro, um, who is just an amazing uh, success coach. And, and I'm very, very happy to be part of this group. Um, and uh, it's been incredibly transformative in my life. And... Basically, Bob Proctor talks about these, these types of goals. Now, the C-type goal is a goal that you've never achieved before, and the process of achieving it is what is going to cause growth in your life. Okay? So for, my, for me, for example, maybe 40 events before the end of the year wasn't a big enough goal, but for me it was really exciting because I actually ended up doing more events than I had in many years. I got to speak with a number of different groups and it was fantastic. In clarifying this goal, I said to this person, I said, you know, I said, I don't know if that's really a great goal because as, as weight loss, you know, it's something that we have done. Um, now, depending on, you know, where you are in that spectrum of health, if your weight loss goal is to lose 150 pounds because your life depends on it, yeah, that's great. And, and you don't know how you're gonna do it? Hey, that's even better. Right, because that is a goal that, in the pursuit of achieving it, that is going to cause some amazing personal growth, and that really is a great thing. That's a fantastic thing. Now, this person was so offended by this, and even after clarifying it, uh, she said, "Okay, I get it now. Um, that you know, I achieved that back then, but now, of course, uh, it wouldn't be a C-type goal because I've already done it." Yes, absolutely correct. Now let's move on. But this person really didn't want to move on from that and, and of course, um, caused some fallout. And you know what? That's fine. Hey, if I misspoke, I apologize. I'm sorry for it. Here's the thing, though, okay? If you have good self-esteem, if you firmly believe in yourself, it matters not what your accomplishments of the past were. Know that you've achieved them and you've done a great job. What are you going to do with that information now? And everybody has a right to an opinion. And everybody has a right to make a correction or to ask you if really what you said was, was actually what we were talking about. And what I found and what I do find sometimes when I talk about these goals, for example, if I throw a number out, okay, um, and life is not about making money, but as a speaker, and as somebody who travels and as a, as a single parent, um, it's very important that 
I can make the money, have the goal, make the money to help my kids out, whether they're in university, whether they're at home. There are always bills to pay. And so the next detail I threw out there, I, I threw this number out. It's an outrageous number. Quarter million. So if I wanted to make a quarter million dollars this year, and that's that was kind of a... Um, it's, it's not really the goal that I've set, but it's kind of fun to think about. Uh, if I were to want to make a million dollars, um, then I would have to do so many events, and so many events would have to have so much money uh, for each event. Then one of the other people attending this event said, well, why would you, why would you set a monetary goal? You know, why wouldn't you just do it for the benefit of, of helping people and reaching out? I said, you know what? That's a great point. Here's the thing. If I wanted to, say, have 80 speaking events this year, okay, and make my living off that, I can speak all over the place for free. That doesn't help me out. I can speak all over the place for 100 bucks every time. Or I can speak all over the place for $1,000 a time, or $2,500 a time, or $5,000 a time. But every time that number goes up, the event that I'll be speaking at changes, and they become more elite which I think is great. But here's where we get lost in the details, okay? The person was so fixated on that dollar amount. And I think sometimes in life, we get so fixated on the dollar amount that we, whether we have it or don't have it, that we kind of get lost along the way. If you don't have a goal, and even a monetary goal, and you know, the thing about it, and, and yes, money isn't everything, but we all need to make some money to survive. And why not make enough money to have a life of abundance? And keep this in mind. Uh, say, for example, I achieve my goal of making a quarter million dollars, and then next year I decide to bump it up to a half a million dollars because my speaking career is going so well. And, hey, it's a great dream. And there's nothing wrong with having a dream, especially if you can hold it in your hand. With that money, that means that for groups, for organizations in the city of Lethbridge, instead of just showing up and volunteering for them, I can actually give money. I can give charitably. I can help support. So when I talk about making that money, right, people get hung up on the details because they're afraid of money. And if your first response is, oh, you're all about the money, no, I'm actually not. Uh, I mention that because it allows me to see in my mind how much each event that I'm going to be uh, booking, speaking at, doing, how much it has to be worth, right? So that allows us to move forward. You know, it's the same thing. Um, if you are, say for example, uh, you're, you're a mountain climber, a mountaineer, and one of your bucket lists is to climb Mount Everest. It's going to take money. It's going to take a lot of money. You're going to have to have the time off. You're going to have to have time to train. You're going to have to do all kinds of of, of, of neat things in order to get prepared for it. Um, you know, speaking of people doing uh, some some really cool things, uh, a while back, I had my friend Shannon on the program, and it was just before she was about to bike across Canada. Now, last year, it, in a month's time, just over a month's time, she successfully biked from Vancouver to Halifax. Absolutely amazing woman. Her next um, goal which is coming up in May, is going to be to run the Great Wall Marathon. So she's going to go to China, and this is, I didn't realize this was actually a run, but there is a run that takes you over a 40-kilometer course out just outside of Beijing uh, to run the Great Wall of China. And the elevation changes are staggering. At some points, uh, literally, you are climbing up half a kilometer before making a gradual descent or making a quick descent and then leveling off and climbing up again. So you're going up and down. And uh, I, think, I think that's absolutely exciting. And here's the thing now, you know, here's a woman setting a goal and it takes money to make that happen because of course you have to be able to afford the flight, you have to be able to afford the stay there, and you have to be able to afford to take time off of work. These all go to goals. Now, running the wall is really exciting and she's actually running it uh in honor of a friend of hers um who uh who basically who passed away last year and we'll have more details and hopefully i can get shannon to come back on the show again and uh talk a little bit more about it 
here's a young woman who has accomplished some amazing things, you know, from running across Alberta, uh, which she did a year ago, uh, well, a little bit over a year ago, and then biking across Canada, which she did last year, and now to run the uh, Great Wild. Now, she's quite prolific on Facebook. She's always in the gym. She's always working out. Great, you know, great abs, uh, amazingly powerful woman, absolutely powerful. And, and I think it's great to surround ourselves with people like this who are truly inspiring. Now, my big thing with this, um, if when, when I make my, my monetary goals a reality, and who knows when that's going to be, but I'll tell you what, it's a great goal and it's a great dream, um, then instead of being the person that supports or brings her on the show and helps to, uh, to support her, I can actually be somebody who actually helps to financially support and actually help to financially support those in need. And I really look forward to that because I believe that inside me there's a bit of a, a philanthropist that is just dying to get out. And so that's where I'm heading with that. And, you know, we have to have goals, right? But how are we setting those goals? How are we going about making those goals a reality? Okay, so let's look at, I want to be a speaker. Well, why do I want to speak? You know, there is just something about being able to share with people. Uh, I love being on stage. I love the comedy, the laughter. I love being a stage hypnotist. I love the, the power of the human mind to create. And I love seeing where people will go with the simple suggestions that I give them. And it is that, that passion that really drives me forward. And I look forward to creating more and more opportunities to do that. You know, last Christmas season was great. I mean, love being able to do all the local shows that I did. And, and it was really nice because I didn't have to jump into my car and drive six hours. And um, even though, um, you know, at part of the hypnotist group that I'm, I belong to, uh, we are, you know, doing bookings here, there, and everywhere. And, and, of course, in order to help one of the other hypnotists out in that group, you know, I made a trip to Regina. I made a trip out to uh, Edmonton. You know what? Good to travel around. But, you know, that can be tiring sometimes. And uh, it's nice to be able to work locally. And I'll tell you what, I am so thankful, I'm so happy and grateful uh, for all the local business that I did over the Christmas season. And uh, moving forward, I am looking forward to any return customers, and I'm also looking forward to any groups that actually want to heard about the shows and would like to have me back, you know, because it's great. The city is growing, and, and I can do a ton of shows locally before we get any overlap because it's been years and years since I've actually uh, worked this much in the community. I still have my therapy practice, love helping people that way, and I, I love the challenging the challenging cases, uh, cases where an individual, say for example, has has done a lot of uh, work with other uh, practitioners, but they still suffer from that that challenge. They have it could be depression, uh, it could be low self esteem, it could be anxiety. You know what? I have tools and resources to help people like that, and I am more than happy to share them and to help propel them forward. This all goes back to self esteem. And one thing that one of my clients pointed out to me was the thing that she really liked about what I had to offer was the confidence and the belief that I could help her where others had not. And I said, well, it goes to understanding the human psyche and perception and how we become what we become. We become what we think of all of the time. And so in the case of depression and anxiety, this is an oversimplified view, okay, and I don't want anyone to be offended by this. When we know where that comes from, we can begin the journey of releasing the emotional attachment to it and then moving forward to become better, to become stronger, and to become more of who we are meant to be. And that is an exciting journey. Why do we do it? Because we believe that we are 100% worthy of it. You are worthy of it. You are worthy of change. And that's where people get hung up. People who require validation all the time, people who get easily offended, um, a comment gets made and they go on a big rant about how this comment was completely unjustified. I want you to stop and think about it. Why were you offended? Were you offended because you did put a lot of work in? Or were you offended because you felt belittled? Or were you offended wrongly because you didn't understand 
what was actually being asked. And you're so wrapped up in yourself that you can't see a different perspective. Now, that perspective, human perception, is an amazing thing. I'd be the first one to tell you that my perception of a lot of things tends to be a little bit on the warp side, tends to be quite a bit different. Um, but that said, I do work on it. And I firmly believe and, and, and love the way my brain works, and I understand the limitations of it. It's that wonderful ADHD brain that basically just requires more focus to make great things happen. Where's your focus? If your focus is always inward and me, 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 and by the way, you know, uh, we all suffer from that from time to time. I know for myself, yesterday was not a particularly good day um, in the sense that I had these things from the weekend rattling around there, and, and I felt bad about the fact that I might have offended somebody or that I did offend somebody. I'm as human as the next person. I'm not out any way, shape, or form to offend people. I want to inspire. I want to help. And I also want to learn. And if I said something that offended somebody, I want to look at that. And I'm going to go, okay, you know, that, if you're offended by it, it says more about you than it does about me. How about that? Think of the last time somebody said something to you and it offended you, right? And what did you do with that? Did you go on a tirade and a rant for days and days and days afterwards? Or did you kind of put it where it needed to be and just, okay, I'm going to learn from that and then move forward from there? A lot of times, um, I think if we go on that rant, we have to stop and look at it and go, okay, why did that, why did that affect me? And I think what ends up happening is the answer comes back, well, because maybe, maybe the problem is me. Maybe I don't believe enough in myself. Maybe I need to make the change. And if that's the perspective that you're at, that's a good thing. Because you've just addressed an issue. Think about it. Where are you in life? Are you easygoing? Um, or are you always, you know, one step away from blowing up? Are you always blaming everyone else for what you've got going on? Well, I'll tell you what. The first step in recovery the first step in building up your self-esteem and making things even better, the first step is recognizing the simple fact that if you're blaming everyone else, then you have no accountability to yourself. If you're blaming everyone else for your success in life and everything that you've got going on, then guess what, my friends? You have no accountability. And therefore, the successes in your life are not yours to own. Now, can you imagine that? Now, we all know people like that. People who are constantly telling you about something that somebody else did that prevented them from doing what they needed to do. Or they're always making excuses. Now let's get back to self-esteem, okay? If somebody says something to you about the journey you're on, and you can't step back from it and say, you know, you're right. I, I, you know, I, I need to do this or I need to do this. Um, maybe the challenge is with you and how you see yourself, i.e. your self-esteem your self-perception. Maybe that's the area you need to work on. Well, we know for a fact that the only way that we can address our faith in ourselves, self-esteem, self-confidence, is through affirmations and auto-suggestion. And if you don't know what auto-suggestion is, I, I highly recommend that you look up Earl Nightingale on YouTube Music and look at his cover of um, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich in the chapter on faith. Auto-suggestion. By constantly telling ourselves over and over again that we've got this, that we are enough, that we can do it. I am enough. I'm so happy and grateful now that I am believing in myself more. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm more focused. I'm so happy and grateful. That auto-suggestion, I am, it is the only way that you can change how you feel about yourself. Well, think about that. Where are you with believing yourself? Where are you with how you feel? I know for myself, it's been an absolutely incredible journey. And it, it hasn't been a perfect one. But I tell you what, it's been amazing. And, and I am so happy and grateful for the people that have joined me on this journey, for the people that, you know, have supported me, for the people that have come back into my life as friends, as partners, as family, um, what have you. 
I am so happy and grateful for those people who stand by me and believe in me. And I don't require the validation of somebody else believing in me. It's nice to have that support because we all need support in life. We are not meant to be isolated. We're not meant to be alone. We are designed to be together. We are designed to have community. It is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So moving forward from this day, where are you with how you feel about yourself? When I go and speak at schools, and this is something that my passion is to make this an absolute reality, where I can go out and I can, during the course of the week, I can get out to schools and I can inspire young minds because I firmly believe that, you know, when we look at the opioid crisis that we're under right now, if we can start off with the youth of today and inspire them and let them know that the world is theirs to basically create. I believe we've come one step further to creating a world that we can be really proud of. And it's through that connection, through that community, that we'll make that happen. Now, as we're moving forward, ask yourself that question. How do you feel about yourself? What are you getting annoyed about? What's making you angry? What's making you happy? We all deserve to have a life not of suffering, a life of abundance. So where are you with that? Now, with everything that we've talked about, and I, you know, I, I feel like sometimes, uh, and, and I know people have said this, a lot of times the things that I say on my program are repetitive. Right. We need that. We need that repetition because that repetition reinforces the direction that we're going in. And then you think about it. Anyone, say, for example, who is a black belt in Taekwondo or, or, or is proficient in any martial arts, anybody like that has practiced, has repeated over and over and over again. It is through that repetition that we reach a new level of excellence, that we become better and better than we were before. So think, think about that for a bit, okay? And if you've got any questions about it or you've got any questions about what I do, by all means, I look forward to the comments here. Um, I actually was not able to, um, to follow along. Let me just see here. See where the shares are at. Um, okay. Uh, by the way, thank you, Jesse, for uh, for sharing along. And you know what? I will get back to doing more of these because I know consistency, that is the key. That is the key to getting more viewers and stuff. So we'll be mornings with James, hypnotist J.R. Matthew. Um, you can find out more information about the programs that I'm offering and uh, just where I'm going to be and what I'm doing. you find out more information on that online at jrmatthew.com. Hey. What a great start to a Tuesday. It is windy like crazy outside, but at least it's not cold. I welcome your questions, your comments. Uh, it's only been a half an hour this morning. We'll get back at it on a regular basis. Share the inspiration. Share it forward. And I look forward to uh, discussing more of this with you as time goes on. Guys, have yourself an amazing day. Bye for now.